Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I can still hear people talking out yonder, but they'll get back in here in just a second. So I'm making up noise. It's good to see all y'all here. I do appreciate your prayers last week. We did have a very smooth um, traveling time there and back. Um, didn't run into a whole lot of traffic. Didn't run into any real, real big delays. So um, I do appreciate all of that. And we're back again. Home, glad to be home. Um, announcements wise, um, Wednesday night we'll be here at 6 o'clock. Uh, still studying the book of Acts, having a really good time with that. Children's class will be out in the in the gym. Uh, they're having a good time. Um, and that's the announcements for now. The, the women had a good meeting, I think. It sounded like they did. Um, and men, we'll get we'll get on it next month. We'll get we'll get back into the routine and we'll get it. We'll get it all together here. Let's pray together and invite the Lord in our service this morning. Lord, I thank you. I thank you that we are we have this opportunity to be in your house this morning. We have this opportunity to meet together, to worship together, to to hear from you together, to just to tell you how much we love you, Lord. And as we go into this service this morning, Lord, we want you to be here. Lord, I, I I just crave to hear from you this morning. Your voice, your words, your will, your way. Lord, I pray that you move through this service. I pray that we can just put a smile on your face as we praise your name this morning. And we thank you for all that you have done and all that you will do. pray all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Good morning. Let's turn to page 195. 195.
sung this way anyway. I'm redeemed, praise the Lord, I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. There's exclamation points at the end of all those. That means we get to yell that a little bit. What a thing to think about. Redeemed means that you've been paid for, you have been purchased out of slavery. A lot of times in the Bible they would, they would talk about redeeming someone. Uh, Hosea redeemed Gomer, his wife, um, who had, was on the, uh, the auction block to be sold as a slave. I lived in slavery to this world. I lived in slavery to my own desires. I, I lived in slavery to sin and to death. And God redeemed me. Praise the Lord. Woo, praise the Lord. That's what it says. Gives me goosebumps just thinking about it. And I'm thankful for that this morning. I'm thankful that we had a, a good trip. I'm thankful that we got to see some family that we haven't seen in a while. But I am so very thankful to be home and in my own bed. <laughs> There's, you, you never realize how good your own mattress is until so you sleep on somebody else's. And I don't care how good their mattress is, it ain't as good as yours. <laughs> it's just what you get used to. Um, I am thankful, though, that we're, we got home safe and the trip was good. And, and I'm just, as I sing that song, I'm, if I can praise God for nothing else today, I'm thankful that I am redeemed. I'm thankful that I'm saved. I'm thankful for the price that God paid for me. Tell me something good that happened to you this week. What do we have to praise God for? I had another birthday. You had another birthday, and you got to you got something else. You got you got to go to a wedding too. I got yesterday. That's awesome. I didn't dance. Though. Okay, that's all right. <laughs> Happy birthday, by the way. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. I'd like to thank everybody for their prayers during the time I was in the hospital. I'm, uh, I'm doing better. I still have one more stint to go. Okay. But um, if you could continue to pray for me, I would appreciate it. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're thankful you're here, up and around, moving. Doing better after three weeks in the hospital. So. There we go. Anywhere is better than the hospital after Absolutely. three weeks in the hospital. <laughs> Absolutely. All righty. We do have some some prayer requests, uh, some things to, to remember. Um, Howard and Lynn are on the road with Sarah as well, going to Vero, I think Vero Beach, to see uh, Biz and family and for some things down there. Um, and thinking of them, Mary was in a traffic accident. Um, we need to continue to remember, need to remember her and that, and continue to remember Miss Judy and her, her recovery from a tra traffic accident. Um, and Penny and Marie dealing with shingles. Remember her. Um, I told my son, I got to talk to Caleb some as we were there, and that was nice. But he called me the other day and he said, Daddy, can you put something on the on the prayer list? And I said, Well, absolutely. You know, that's he was asking like I might tell him no. <laughs> well, yeah, son. Uh, and he doesn't even know the man's name. It's just he says he's a friend. He's a friend from work. He doesn't work. Caleb works at, um, at a hardware store, and the man that's his friend doesn't work there. He's just in there all the time. But he said he came in, and, you know, he looked. I asked him how he was doing because he looked kind of rough. He said, well, I'm doing fine. I just um, I, I had a brain tumor, and it's been removed. And uh, he said, but I'm doing good. He said he's always upbeat in great spirits. Uh, he told him, he said, listen, I've seen combat, and I've been injured in combat. This is nothing. And then he came back in the store about a week ago, and, and it hit hit all of them. They're there. He's just, I mean, they they always have great conversation with him. But um, he was told he has stage four brain cancer, and they gave him about three months to live. Hmm. And Caleb said, "Can you please pray for him?" And I said, "Absolutely, we can pray. We don't even know his name." He said, "But he still has such a great attitude, and it's almost I don't understand that he still has such a great attitude. He's still so upbeat." But I don't know who, I don't know his name. I just, I, we don't have to know his name. God knows who he is. Um, what other, oh, and uh, tomorrow at 2 o'clock at Norton's is Greg Campbell's memorial service. Uh, he passed this past week. Um, so we remember that family as well. But that's it. You get, if you are interested, it's tomorrow, 2 o'clock at Norton's in the chapel there. Is there a his, his memorial service? So, you have a need on your heart, you want to speak out this morning. 
This way, let's pray. All right, let's go to the Lord's Prayer. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for salvation. I thank you. I thank you for this family that we have here. I thank you that you gave us this. We call our church family, our, our fellow believers, our brothers and sisters in you. I'm thankful that we pray together, that we pray for one another, that we intercede for one another, Lord. And I'm thankful that you listen. Lord, I have but to look around just a little bit. Just have my eyes open and pay attention, really. And I can see your hand at work in this world. And I can see you answering prayers all around. Lord, we come to you this morning praising you for those answered prayers. Praising you for safety. Praising you for health. Praising you just for being there. But Lord, as we come to you this morning too, as we approach your throne boldly and with confidence. Lord, we have needs, we have burdens. We have people that we love that you have brought into our lives that, that are hurting and need a touch from you, Lord. I think of this, this man that's had such an impact on Caleb's life in the short time that he's known him. And we don't know his name, but you do. And Lord, I just pray for a touch of your hand in him. I pray for a miracle. I pray to move in such a way that nobody can deny that it is you. Lord, right now I can tell you you're already there for him to have the attitude that he does in the midst of all this. But Lord, I just pray for a wonderful testimony to come out of that whole situation, Lord. I pray for those that we know that are traveling right now, Lord. I pray for a hand of protection over them. For those that have had these traffic accidents lately, Lord. I know what it's like to, to have those accidents and to feel the next day like you, you've been hit by somebody because you have. And Lord, I know that recovery is never as quick as we want it to be. Lord, I just pray for your hand in that, that you ease the pains that need to be, that need to be eased, that recovery can be quick and life can get back to normal. Lord, I pray for your hand in this world. We have physical needs. We have ones that we know that we have loved that have, that have now passed, Lord. And for those that are left behind, I do pray for comfort on them. But Lord, I just pray that you lead and guide this church, that you lead and guide this world, that people just begin to pay attention to you and your hand and what you're doing. That we begin to pay attention and hold on to you. Lord, as a church, I just I pray that you continue to lead and to guide us, to show us the next step and the next thing and, and what we need to do. Lord, I pray that we are prepared and that we are that we have the strength to keep moving, to keep following after you. The clear vision to see what it is that you're doing. Lord, I pray for each and every individual in this place that is redeemed that as we leave this place that we live our lives in such a way that there is no doubt of that. That we love those that are around us that we, we show you to a world that is looking for something. And Lord, I know in my heart that they're looking for you. They may not know it, but they are. Lord, I, I just pray for those needs, those spiritual needs, those soul needs that are so much more important because where we spend eternity is so much more important than, than the little bit of time that, we, that we're here. Lord, I just pray that you'd be with us in the rest of the service, that, that we hear from you. It doesn't matter what words that I say this morning, Lord. I just pray that it is your spirit and your voice that we hear as we go through this time together. Lord, I thank you for all the answered prayers. I thank you that we can see those. I thank you that you allow us to see your hand moving in that. I thank you for the things that you're doing right now that we don't, just don't know. We don't know what they are. We, we just know we can have confidence that it's going to be, it's going to be great.
It's going to be good because you were good. And Lord, I just thank you for all those things that you're going to do in the future. I give your name all the praise and the glory forever. And I pray all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want you to turn with me to the book of 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 3. <clears throat> and whatever is in my throat needs to get out. We're be, we begin reading 1 Samuel chapter 3 right at the beginning of the chapter in verse 1. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. One night Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord where the ark of God was. Let me explain a little bit who Samuel is, because that's in the, in the previous chapters. Samuel's mother could not have children, had never had children, and she came to the, to the, to the temple there, to the place, the, the work, place of worship there, and she was praying, and she said, Lord, you just give me a child, I'll give him to you. And God heard her prayer. Um, and she had a child, and as soon as he was weaned and was able, she brought him back to the Lord. And she put him there in this place to basically be raised by Eli, the priest, and the others that were there. Now she would come back, it says she came back and she visited him. She didn't just forsake the child. But Samuel's very young, he's a child. He's very small. We don't know, I don't know exactly how old he is here, but he is, he's a child. It's important to know that. Eli is the older priest, and he is laying in his spot where he is supposed to be to make sure that the lamp that's before, that's burning before the Lord does not go out. So there, that's where they are. Verse 4 says, Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. But Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. How many have ever had a small child come to you in the middle of the night and say, Hey, there is nothing like waking up to like a three or four year old and you wake up and as soon as your eyes open, they're right here. <laughs> And I've said something very similar to a child in that situation. Go back to bed. Now, Eli's probably a little bit more gentle than this, but I can see that. He's like, I didn't call you. Go back to sleep. Verse 6, again, the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. Good old Eli. My son Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. Now, Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. A third time, the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. And Eli, Eli realized the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli said, told Samuel, Go and lie down, and if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there calling as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, Speak. For your servant is listening. And the Lord reveals to Samuel what is coming and the things that he is going to do. It's important to realize too, just a point to make, it says Samuel didn't know the Lord. He was young, he had not yet been taught those things. It doesn't happen as often for me anymore, but when my children were smaller, You'd be walking through a store, you'd be at a, and every once in a while, be at a ballpark or wherever, and you would hear, Daddy! And it's automatic as a father. Your head snaps around because you hear the call, and it's not even your child. I've had it happen a few times where I'm in a store and I hear, um, I hear that little voice, that little child's voice, and I realize my kids don't sound like that anymore. Not one of them. But still, your head snaps around, you're like, well, somebody's calling me because that was my name, and they would call for me. And I would listen, and I would respond. I visited my mom and dad in this past week, 
And I got lucky. I did not hear the words Michael Wayne one time, which meant I behaved in the vision of my mother. But I would hear that every once in a while. That calls for a response. When she uses both names, it means my head is going to turn around. <laughs> Two weeks ago, I sit out on a pew out here in, in the back, in the, I don't even know what that's called, North X, wherever, the vestibule, that area, out there just outside the doors. I sit on that pew, and, and I can hear y'all Sunday school class, I'm just letting y'all know. Um, I can't really understand anything that's being said, but I can hear. But as I'm, I'm sitting there, and I'm not even listening close, I hear my wife's voice say, Bo, very clearly. And my head kind of perks up, kind of like that dog hearing its name. I know that call, I know that voice, I can't understand anything else, but I know that my wife has just called my name. I'm getting to where I can't hear as well. I actually have a hearing test that said that I cannot hear things in the female voice range very well. They would not put that in writing for me, though. And so every once in a while I have to look at the woman and I said, what did you say? But I know she was talking to me. I know she was talking to me because I hear it, because I hear the call. It is very important that we hear the call in our life. When our children call us, when our parents call us, when our, our spouse calls us, when anybody else calls our name, when they're trying to get our attention, we need to respond. And how we respond is very, very important. I've said this recently from this very pulpit. You do not meet God and leave unchanged. We have to listen for the call of God. And I believe that God is calling all the time. People will say, well, how do I know? How do I hear his voice? You know, I, I know very few people that can say they've heard an audible voice of God before. I have. Now, in that time, it was not pleasant <laughs> because that audible voice was getting on to me and I paid attention to that call. We hear it through the Word of God. We hear it through, through reading our Bible. We hear it just by, by listening and to the Holy Spirit leading in our lives. But when God calls, we need to respond. And unfortunately, there are two responses. One response is a response that I did for many, many, many years. In the book of Jonah, which is a little bit farther on in the Old Testament there, if you, turn, if you want to turn to that, Jonah, and I'll be in chapter 1. Jonah is called of God. Jonah is a prophet of God. Now these prophets, they had, a, they had a, a specific purpose. This is how God spoke to the people. This is before the Holy Spirit really has come into the world. And, and we get to listen in that way like we do today. This is before that. Jesus said when he leaves, he'll send another. That's what we have. The prophet was the voice of God to the people. The prophet would be delivered a message, and it's his job to go and give it to the people. Simple as that. Now that message, they don't even have to understand the message most of the time, and Jonah was a prophet. He was given messages to deliver to the people. He receives a call from God one day, and he doesn't like it. Jonah chapter 1, verse 1, The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it, because its wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish. He went down to Joppa, where he found a ship bound for that port. After paying the fare, he went aboard and sailed to Tarshish to flee from the Lord. Now, if you will look at geography of the day, Nineveh was this way, Tarshish was that way. Okay? When God calls, there's a choice of response. Jonah chose to run. I can tell you in my life, I ran from the call of God for many, many, many years. I remember sitting, it's enclosed now, but basically on the back patio of my parents' home, talking to my dad and said, Dad, I really think I feel a call to ministry. I was in my in my early 20s. He said, as a parent will do, I know. So annoying. <laughs> but I can tell you that I ended up turning from that call, running from that call, for almost 20 years. Let me tell you what happens when you run from the Lord. You get tired. 
Because that's it. That's all you're going to get out of that. Is you're going to get tired. When God calls, he calls for a response. And the proper response is exactly what Samuel did there. He recognized, eventually, and he responded, Lord, here I am. And he did it in such a way that it just made sense. And it's something to remember. When God calls, what do we do? What if we don't know it's God? What if we don't really want to understand what's going on? We can do what Samuel did. Go to somebody wiser than you and ask them. He hears the call of God and he goes straight to Eli. Eli is, I mean, you've got to think for Samuel, that is, that is just the fount of wisdom. That is, that is, he's everything. And he goes straight to Eli. I heard something. You called me. And he looks for that wisdom, and Eli imparts that wisdom to him, and he told him what to do, and then he did exactly what he was supposed to. He responded and said, here I am. I think there's something to the fact also that he was a child. Jesus said one time, lest you be as his children, you know, enter the kingdom of heaven. What does that mean? Does that mean that I'm supposed to be small and immature all my life? Well, I've, I've pretty much accomplished the immature part most of my life. But that's not what it's calling for. Samuel never questioned. It was simply, okay. As I get older, I find that I question, Lord, is there not somebody better suited for this task than me? But the response really should just be, here I am. Lord, use me. I didn't look up a specific verse. It was on one of the on my phone. I have the verse of the day that comes from my Bible app. And it was, be still and know that I am God. Now that's only half of that verse, by the way. But that's the part that we usually quote. That's the part that we learn. That's the part usually that's all that's said. Be still and know that I am God. And there's a lot of good things in that. But be still can also be translated as breathe. Take a breath. Achieve some peace and know that I am God. Because it goes on to say, and I'm going to butcher this, but it says, I will be praised. I will be, exhausted, be exalted. And the part that strikes me of that is, I will. That is not God saying, eh, it might happen. That is God saying, regardless of what you do, my will will be accomplished. When God calls, understand this, this is one of the things that we just have to accept. God's will is going to be accomplished. There is nothing in this world that I can do to stop God's will from being accomplished. I can keep God's will from being accomplished in my life. I can assume to choose to walk the opposite way. I can choose to step outside of what he wants. I can thwart God's will within my life, absolutely. And I can thwart God's blessings within my life, that's what that really comes down to. And I can walk away from Him. But God's will in this world, I can tell you, will be accomplished. God was going to send Peter to the Gentiles. That's just something that you, as you read, you kind, of, you kind of get that. And Peter doesn't go as immediately as he needs to. He does eventually go. But God's will was for so much more. And here comes this, this Saul, this Paul, who becomes Paul. And God calls him. And guess what? God's will is accomplished in the world. It didn't matter what those two boys did. It was going to happen. In Samuel chapter 14, I want you to turn there. Because I, I read this and it just, man, it, it came right out. In Samuel chapter 14, we, we, we meet... A young man named Jonathan. Jonathan is the son of King Saul. And best friend of David, who will eventually become King David. David that, that killed Goliath. Jonathan displays a faith here that, that really just shows that he accepts the fact that God's will is going to be accomplished. So Samuel... Chapter 14, verse 1. One day Jonathan, son of Saul, said to his young armor bearer, Come, let's go over to the Philistine outpost on the other side. He did not tell his father. Saul was staying on the outskirts of Gibeah under a pomegranate tree in Magron. With him were about 600 men, among whom was Ahijah, 
who was wearing an ephod. He was a son of Ichabod's brother. I'm not even going to pronounce that. Son of Phineas, son of Eli, the Lord's priest, and Shiloh. No one was aware that Jonathan had left. On the each side of the pass that Jonathan intended to cross to reach the Philistine outpost was a cliff. Let me go down a little bit farther. Verse 6. Jonathan said to his young armor bearer, and I want you to understand, it's just Jonathan and the armor bearer. And the armor bearer is also a, a warrior. These two guys have been trained to fight. They're, they're skilled in what they do. But there's just two of them. And he gets the bright idea. Let's go along and, and, and attack this outpost. I can tell you this outpost had more than two people in it. Okay? We're not talking about a little bit. We're talking about a lot. But Jonathan said to his young armor bearer, come, let's go over to the outpost of these uncircumcised fellows. Perhaps the Lord will act in our, our behalf. Here's the thing that just jumped out and hit me right between the eyes. Nothing can hinder the Lord from saving, whether by many or by few. When God calls, don't doubt. This response, this idea of responding to God, comes with a couple of things that go along and that just help us out. One, you just have to accept that God's will is going to be accomplished. Jonathan understood that God's will was going to be accomplished. He said it doesn't matter if there's a few of us or a whole bunch of us. God's, going, God's got this. What kind of, what wonderful faith is that? But I feel that so much in myself because so many times I go, Lord, do you not know who I am? I, I've made a mess of this life that you gave me. I ran from you for 20 years. I don't have the education that possibly I should have had if I had followed your call. And let me tell you, the call really came before. We were here. <laughs> and I, was, I had the opportunity. I had in my mind, I need to go to Warner. I need to go to Warner. I need to go to Warner. And I knew why I needed to go to Warner because of the ministry school down there. I knew that, but I didn't want to do that. So I began running then. I don't have the education that maybe I should have had. I did not avail myself of the things that God would have blessed me with to maybe make me more effective. But you know what? That doesn't matter. God's will is going to be accomplished. I keep thinking people will say, I, I hear this all the time, and I don't want to be guilty of this. So if you ever hear me say this, you just, you just right in the back of my head, just open-handed now. Just, you do that to me. You get my attention. I've heard people say this, we're, we're just a small church. What, more can, what really can we do? We got the wrong thought process there. It's not what I can do, it's what God is going to do. It's understanding that when God calls, I just need to enact in accordance with what He is that He's called me to. Jonathan and his armor bearer go into this going, let's see what God's going to do. They go into this I can only imagine that it's the call of God that has, that has brought Jonathan this idea that, hey, I'm going to take this one guy that's really close to me, my armor bearer, would have been the closest, one of the closest people to him. And the two of us are going to go up against this outpost because God can accomplish amazing things. And then when they get there, the armor bearer is kind of going, are you sure? As you read farther, and he says, listen, if this thing happens... If they tell us, if they tell us, these, these Philistines, when they see us, if they tell us, y'all come on up, then we know that God has delivered them into our hands, and we'll go. And if they do this other thing, and I can't remember what the other thing was, because it doesn't matter, because they did the first one. He says, we'll know that God is not with us on this, and we'll hightail it back to, to Dad. Those Philistines see them, and they say, come on up. Come on, boys. Ain't the two of you. And they go up there and they rout the entire outpost. And they start a great victory for the people. <clears throat> Except when God calls, and I would leave you to this, when God calls, accept that God's will is going to be accomplished. You are not too small. You are not unworthy. You are not unprepared. You are not <clears throat> unqualified. Whatever it is, if God calls you to do it, understand that God, His will is going to be accomplished. And He has chosen you to get to be a part of it. It is a great privilege. 
He has chosen, man, I just, I just thought about that. It gives me goosebumps to think about. He has chosen you to get to go through this, to get to see it firsthand, to get to be that first person a part of it. He has given you a great privilege, a great honor. He said, listen, I have this great gift from you. My will is going to be accomplished in this world. It's going to be awesome, and I want you to be a part of it. So accept that God's will is going to be accomplished. Act in accordance with what he has for you to do. And then keep your eyes open to what he does. God is called, and he calls, as I have it written down, he calls every day, he calls all the time. And we have but to respond to it. And we have two choices in that. Yes or no. But man, what we miss out on when we tell him no. Let's pray together. Lord, I love you. I thank you. I thank you for the wonderful privilege that you've given me in my life as you have, you've called me. I thank you for your patience in that time that I, I ran. Lord, as we sit here today, all of us together, you just got to I know, I have faith that there's, there, there are some here today that are hearing a call from you. A call to act, a call to, to accomplish your will in this world, Lord. Lord, I pray that they answer here and I. Lord, for those right now that aren't hearing that call, that aren't, it's just not our time yet. I pray that we are prepared, that we are have our eyes open, our ears open to hear from you. And that when that call comes, we will say, here am I. Lord, thank you so much that you love us so much to gift us with that. That you love us so much to say, listen, I'm going to accomplish something awesome. I'm going to accomplish something great. And I want you to be a part of it. Lord, I thank you that we can look at your word and we can see that even when we don't know you, that you still call us. Lord, if there's anyone here today that doesn't know you and they hear a call within their heart, they feel a burning that they're supposed to do something. If they're hearing from you, Lord, I pray that they find somebody to help them interpret that call. I hope that it becomes clear. And Lord, most importantly, I hope they respond to that call. They respond, here I am, here I am. Lord, forgive me. Lord, love me. Lord, lead me and guide me because I am yours. Lord, I thank you so much for your love, for your patience. Lord, give us the strength to hear. Open our eyes, open our ears to hear from you. I pray all in the name of Jesus. Page 402, 402.
Lord, I thank you for the time that we have to spend here this morning. Lord, I just pray that that we don't run, that we don't wait, that we hear from you and we follow after you. And Lord, I just pray that if there is anything that keeps us from you, that you show us that. That we can get that right with you, Lord, and we can be a part of the wonderful and amazing things that you have for this world, Lord. That you have for this church, have for each of us individually. Lord, you said you came to give us life and that more abundantly. Lord, as we go outside of this place, help us to keep the confidence that you will work. That we, we, you will accomplish what it is that you said you were going to accomplish. And Lord, just help us to keep our eyes open to move when you want us to move, to, to do the things that you want us to do. Lord, you love us. And you tell us that we are worth so much. Lord, help us take hold of that. To follow you. And to be a light in the world. To show you to others. Lord, as we go outside of this place, just keep us safe until we can come back and spend some more time with the family. And Lord, we thank you for all that you have done and all that you will do. Pray all these things.